Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dale Stonick with A Stern. I'm the safety director here. With me today is Jason O'Brien, our hours of service manager. Jason, how are you today? Wonderful, Dale. Thanks for asking. How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. So let's go ahead and get our call started here. As usual, let's go over our numbers to see how we're doing as a group. On our CSA scores for General Freight uh, is the following number. Vehicle maintenance at 83, no change. Hours of service, we did go down four percentage points to 78. So that is a really good looking improvement. Let's just make sure we can continue with that trend. Unsafe driving, no change at 45. Driver fitness creeped up just a little bit to 80, excuse me, 43. And the crash indicator is now sitting at 42. On our wind government side of the house, our vehicle maintenance has moved up again, two percentage points to 60. That is something that we really need to put a lot of focus on. Uh, we have moved almost double our score from this time last year. So let's just make sure when we do get inspections that they're cleaned. In order to do that, we need to identify items such as tires and lights that are uh, not up to par and we're getting those items replaced before we get that roadside inspection. Hours of service score has moved from zero to 28. That is a result of an inspection we had last month where a driver had a violation for not being current on the logs. Uh, that's what happens when you don't have any previous scores and you get one, it's gonna move, move your uh, number right up to the top there. So we need to make sure we're doing a good job on our hours of service, our logs to avoid getting points. Unsafe is at four and the crash indicator at four also. When it comes to claims, uh, the following uh, are repetitive accidents that we are seeing. Uh, we're still hitting stationary objects, seeing that across all the different divisions we have within ACE. So let's just make sure we can identify obstacles in tight spaces and we use good techniques as far as getting out and looking when we're backing to avoid hitting those type of things. The other accident type that uh, we're having a little bit of issue with is our slips, trips, and falls. We just did have an individual here earlier in the week who was tarping. They fell off their trailer and broke their arm. So we need to take precaution on slippery surfaces and identify that and making sure we're wearing non-slip show shoes to avoid that. A couple other injury prevention uh, suggestions are, you know, when you're exiting your tractor, always face the cab. Use your three points of contact when entering or exiting. Keep your weight even distributed so you don't lose your balance. Use the non-slip shows, shoes again, as I mentioned. Look before you make that final step. Uh, truck stop parking lots especially could be icy, even if, um, you know, when you're getting out, make sure you can see what you're stepping onto. And the same holds true when you're on your equipment. Uh, see if there's any ice there and be careful. All right, uh, Jason, do you want to give us our clean inspections for the month? Yes, absolutely, Dale. Going ahead and taking a look at the clean inspections, we had 13, 14 of them. And with the uh, 14 that we have on the wind side, we have Donald Hare with a clean inspection. And, and then the wind gov with the government, we have uh, the Sprags uh, that had a clean inspection, that, so that's wonderful. And then with the ACE um, BME DOT number, we have Thomas Smith with a clean inspection, Dustin Higgins, Joseph Vanek, Kamal Ford, uh, Wayne Finstat, uh, Levi J. Miller, Jason Burton, Tareen Doyle, Doyle uh, Paula Keefling, Donald Lay Miller, uh, Stephen Burdick Sr., and uh, Nelson Casario. Um, we did fail to mention Nelson in the newsletter, so we apologize about that, uh, but we did want to make sure uh, that we know that he, he appreciates, or we appreciate his clean inspection as well. So thank you for those. Of course, we'll go ahead and uh, put everybody's name in our little hat here and uh, be giving away another Yeti cup. So those are the ones that we have there. All right. Back to you. What do you have as far as, oh, Jason, I was going to ask you, what's going on in the world of logs? Well, with going on in the, what's going on in the world of logs, I guess, is is really <laughs> some positive things have happened since e-logs have been implemented. Uh, in the beginning, you know, there were a lot of drivers that were reluctant to do it. Some would even say that they'd retire before it would happen. We we didn't really see that many. I don't think we saw anybody actually do that here, at least, um, which is great. You know, drivers learned how to do them and 
and have been doing them really well. Some of the things that we've been seeing recently, uh, as far as the basic operation of the logs, they do a great job as far as going on duty and off duty, watching the hours and making sure that and everything as far as time is, is in there and looks perfect. But I've kind of seen where some of the finer points of the logs, you know, things that you would do on paper and it would just be apparent because it's right there. Um, because it, there's a line that says uh, shipping documents on your paper log. On an e-log, sometimes that number is not being changed as drivers change uh, loads or if they're empty. And it's important to make sure that that does get changed. Um, one of the things that I do see is where sometimes the driver might go through the day and as the driver goes through the day, they kind of go on duty and off duty um, in the back uh, for the driving, I should say. So they're going on duty driving and then on duty and then on duty driving. And at the end of the day, they might go in and try to find some time to edit in a break. Um, we've seen where there's not necessarily always that time there to put that in. So it kind of leads to an issue where then the driver has a violation since there's not a half an hour of time that they were stopped, even though they might feel like there's going to be that when they start their day. Of course, the best thing to do is just do that live as things happen throughout the day, plan your break and, and say, okay, this is going to be my break. Um, that way you don't get into a spot where you get to the end of the day and you found out that you don't have any time like that. So it's not going to work out for that day. Um, that of course follows you throughout the, the eight days. And if you get stopped six days later, it could lead to a violation uh, that could be unnecessary as so long as you plan for your break. So kind of uh, keeping up with those bill of lading numbers and then just keeping your logs, whether they're paper or ELDs, just you know up to date for your last duty status as much as possible to prevent those violations from happening. Thank you, Jay. And then, um, well, oh, go ahead. Sure, Dale, and I apologize. Uh, there was just one other thing I that I wanted to mention. Um, kind of about the editing with the break. And sometimes what we do see is where some drivers might be editing their log every day. Uh, when we see that, it does show up uh, on a roadside inspection. When you would upload your documents to the FMCSA, it's going to show up how many edits were made and what the reasoning was that you put in for those edits to be made. So it's just um, good to be conscious of that and know that an officer is going to see that should you get a roadside inspection. Uh, go ahead, Dale. Back to you. So, uh, you just made a really good point there. Um, I know sometimes drivers don't think about this, but we really got to make sure we're doing the right things at the right time always. You never can tell we can be involved in an accident, and if it's even not our fault, if there's a significant injury, that other party is going to look to get an attorney or going to subpoena for the logs. And if we're you know, making edits for stuff where we're not getting in breaks, you know, that's going to show up. We just don't ever want to be in a position where if something happens, it's no longer, you're no, we're no longer in the right, the good position. So just be mindful of that. Things happen. We don't intend for them to happen. So we just got to make sure we're always doing the right thing along that way. So yeah, along absolutely. that, um, thank you, Jason. Uh, I would like to point out we are in the midst of uh, doing safety meetings. Jason and I were just up in uh, Cleveland last Saturday, had a good turnout at that safety meeting. This Saturday, we are going to be in Mason, just uh, north of Cincinnati, at the Great Wolf Lodge. I would encourage everybody in the immediate area of uh, Cincinnati to go ahead and attend. We start at 8.30 for as breakfast, and meeting starts at 9. And, and then after that, we will have additional meetings in uh, Youngstown on the 7th, March 14th, we will be in Morton on the 28th of March. We will do the safety meeting at the Louisville Truck Show. And then after that, we have a couple meetings set up in Owensboro and Knoxville in April. So it's a really good opportunity for everyone to come uh, meet with us, meet with their other peers. Uh, there's a lot of information that can be shared during these meetings. I do know that the uh, Last safety call that uh, BME put on, they indicated that uh, in-person safety meetings, you know, you could do the ones online and get credit for that. But we still encourage all of our drivers to attend the in-person safety meetings wherever possible. All right, moving right along, I do want to mention to everybody, make sure if you haven't turned in your 2290 to Lori, 
that they were due here a couple months ago and we're starting our renewals next Monday. If we don't have them, we will have to go ahead and proceed without you as far as plate renewals. So please make sure you got those turned in. When I last spoke with Lori, we we're still quite a few drivers that needed to turn that 2290 in so that we can process your plates. If we have any questions or comments, go ahead and hit star three so we can go ahead and see you in the queue there and uh, ask any question or comment that you may have. All right, so while we're waiting for calls to come in, I do, do want to mention to everybody that we are still in the middle of this is part of the heaviest part of the year where annual inspections are due. Please make sure you stay ahead of that and you get those turned in before the due date. Uh, we're not able to give any sort of grace period to that since we're only doing annual inspections now. So get it done beforehand. And when you do do them, please make sure wherever you go that the name of the vendor is on there, their address and phone number, and pay really close attention to the VIN number. We only require the last six of the VIN, but please make sure it's the correct six digits that are required. A lot of times inspectors transpose numbers. I'm not sure how, but they flip numbers around, obviously, change out letters for numbers. But if it's not right, we are not able to accept that documentation. And we just want to minimize frustration on everyone's part. We want to be able to get that information in, process it, and keep everyone up and working uh, Jason, do we have any calls in yet? Uh, yeah, they're taking a look. There are a couple of drivers in there that they've hit star three, and they do have some questions or comments, safety tips. So uh, we can go ahead and move on to taking those. Go ahead, and uh looks like our first caller is going to be Michael. Mike, how are you doing today? All right, yourself? I just got a comment about... Uh when you were just looking at them logs there and everything else like that, you see start and stop, start and stop. Well, when we're out on a wind farm, we get to a staging area, we're sitting there, we go off duty. Well, then they might have you drive two or three miles and stop again. So that e-log automatically throws you on duty. Then you got to go down, it's uh, off duty, because then you might sit there for another two, three minutes or five minutes or whatever. Then you got to start driving again. And you can't do it on personal conveyance because you're in your truck at the job site. So that's why you see a lot of that stop start on our division side. Oh, yeah. And that's totally not a problem. Doing that is completely fine. Uh, what I was trying to talk about is like where you might do that for your entire shift for the entire day. And then if you were a driver that was required to take a break within the first eight hours, you would go back and try to find a time where you could edit your break in. Where, and where you didn't hit off duty when you should have and, and just taking your break in the first eight hours uh, sometime or anytime you're on duty and slash driving for eight hours consecutively. So going on duty and then uh, back to off duty or even driving and, and doing that even in like small increments is no problem at all. It just becomes a problem if you don't really do your log all day and you just drive and then go on duty and, and back and forth and then try to find a time to edit in a break or something like that, and their time isn't available to do that, or, um, you know, you do it every day, that's going to show up on, if you have a DOT roadside inspection, that you every day go in and edit your log every day, and that will definitely raise a couple eyebrows, I would feel, with the DOT. Right. Well, uh, just because, I mean, like Monday, I think I had five or six of them or just out at the job site, just do it. Oh, yeah. You go a couple of miles then you're, it automatically kicks you off duty or on duty. That's that great log for you to where you can't just go off duty and drive, you know, four or five miles back into the job site to your pad and stop, start, stop, start the whole dang day, all day long, you know, and that's why you see it like that on some of our logs. Yeah, absolutely, and that's totally fine to do that. It's just when you would try to go back and make edits, because you weren't doing it live, like you, you're you saying you're doing it, you know, the way you're supposed to, and that's great. It's kind of for those for people that might not be doing it that way. That was a great point, and thanks for bringing it up. Oh, no problem. Have a good day. All right. Thank you for your call. Okay, thank you. All right. Moving on uh, to our next caller, we have Don. Don, how are you doing? Good, guys. How are you all doing down there, up there? 
We are wonderful. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, on your in-person safety calls or safety meetings, right now yes. on the wind division, we've only got two sites that we're going to, both of them in Oklahoma, about 120 miles, 150 miles apart. be a good time to catch us if y'all could. You know, Tony can give you more update on how long we're going to be there, whatever, but that's all we're delivering to, pretty pinpoint item. Hey, Don, it's Dale. I appreciate that. I'm actually just completed some safety meetings, but I'm in Iowa, so some of the, uh, the gentlemen who hauled the blades were at a job site. But, uh, yes, I always look to see where the majority of you uh, uh, drivers are and try to tailor my meetings to get the most of you. Excellent. Excellent. I appreciate that. Another thing, I want to congratulate well, everybody with ACE that uh, got awards at the symposium. There's a very appreciative Thank a lot you. of recognition. A lot of recognition that goes out there. And, you know, we're always behind Tony, Tony Parson on his. Uh, there is some unsung heroes. Uh, I'd like to bring it to everybody's attention that we've got one go to person in the office there. Go ahead. Don, would that be Alicia? Well, Don, if you can hear us, hit star three and call in and again and let us know who that person is. I'm sure they would love to hear it. Um, moving on, we have Daniel. Dan, how are you doing today? Um, excellent. How are you all doing today? I just wanted to, to recognize you all and uh, let you know that I am a new hire. I've been with Ace for, for a month now, and this is my I'm on my fourth blade uh, hauling with, for you guys there. And uh, I just wanted to touch base and let you know that I'm that I'm I'm here and and look I enjoy working with this company and um, uh, one thing I want to touch is uh, when the, the escorts that we hire uh, that we screen them thoroughly before uh, we start heading out here with these blades because uh, what they say and what they do is two different things so I just I just strongly urge urge that for this company here for moving on that that uh, we. That we screen our escorts as well as well as well as the drivers. So that's all I have for you guys, and uh, just thank you very much for this opportunity of being a driver for you, and uh, and I look forward to a, a prospering career. Great. Well, thank you, Dan. Uh, we love having you here. Dale, did you want to make any comment on that? Uh, I just appreciate you calling in, and uh, really great to see the enthusiasm. So hopefully, I'll see you in the next couple months at a job site or a loading point. Yes, sir. I, I'm looking forward to meeting you all. Thank you. All right. Well, yeah, thank you for calling in, and, and uh, that's a great tip. Of course, uh, escorts, you want to make sure that you're working with people that you can trust uh, for sure. Moving on to our next caller here, we have Arthur. Arthur, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I, too, am a new hire, so i um, glad to be here. Well, yeah, thank you, Arthur. Well, we appreciate having you here. Do you have a safety tip or a question for us today? So so basically, um, a driver that I know that at least on with Bennett had an issue to where um, he was on personal conveyance. He was going from the load bobtail to his house and back to the load bobtail, which would be the same thing as us, like, that we have day cabs going to and from the hotel. From what I understand... That's what personal conveyance was really designed for, and he received a citation, or I, I don't know if he actually got a citation, but he got placed out of service on that very issue doing that same thing. My question was, if that's not correct personal conveyance, what is? Um, well, I mean, there's a lot of different factors that go into what is and isn't personal conveyance, and unfortunately, just knowing that he went home um, and then came back doesn't really tell us all the information that we would need. But the two primary reasons that you would be able to use personal conveyance is for uh, short en route lodging, um, entertainment, or other facilities. So, like if you wanted to go to like uh, a laundromat to do some laundry, or if you wanted to go watch a movie, go to a restaurant, um, things like that is was primarily what it's for. However, another reason that could come up because most of our business is flatbed. Is like if you have uh, you're at a shipper or receiver and you're unloading or unloading and for some reason that puts you over your 14 hour, um, so you wouldn't be over like your 11 hour, but your 14, 
and say that they had a crane that broke or something like that, so they couldn't get whatever you have loaded off. Um, so maybe you were there after you're 14, you're able to use it to go from the shipper to the first available safe haven. So that, those would be like the two primary reasons to use personal conveyance for what we do here. Now, is there a actual regulation to say how far short distance is? Um, well, the thing with personal conveyance is that there's not really any regulation on it. There's only guidance and guidance questions about it. So, no, there's not a regulation that says what a short distance is. Okay. Well, um, the second thing was thank you for that. And the um, second thing was I, I really love it here. It's been great for me. Um, I pull bases on the wind side, mm -hmm. the double snobble. Um I just want to say thank you guys for the opportunity, and I'm glad to be here. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for your question today. We appreciate it. Good question. Yes, sir. All right. All right, going with our next caller, we have Chris. Chris, how are you doing? Friend of the show here. <laughs> doing all right. How are you, Jason? Good. Uh, what's going on, man? Hey, when you was talking about uploading logs to FMCSA. Correct. For us, for us guys that run the uh, Keep Trucking app, that load up the FMCSA, and does it show the edits that we do? No. So if you're a driver, Chris is on, instead of using paper logs, he uses the Keep Trucking app, um, which it, it would equal paper logs, but it's not the full ELD version. So if you're a driver that has an ELD box, um, this wouldn't apply to you. But So what he's asking is if on just the app version uh, without the ELD, would that be something that uh, an officer would see like on a roadside inspection? And the app doesn't have the availability to upload your documents to the FMCSA the same way an ELD version does. So they would still view your logs either on your device itself or they would view your logs by an email or a fax, but they don't have the option with the app-only version to upload them to the FMCSA like the regular ELD does. I hope that makes I didn't sense. Know if they, yeah, yeah, no, it did. It, it did. I didn't know, <laughs> if, you know if the FMCSA F upload was an email or anything like that, so... That, yeah, it's lot. considered. A, yeah, it'll say web service when on the ELD version. Those guys upload it. That it says web service, and they just type in a code. But yeah, your log doesn't have that on there at all. Good question, I appreciate though. Appreciate it. Yeah, I like clearing that up. All right, with uh, that and Chris and his question, that was the last caller that we had in there. So uh, Dale, I don't, I'm sure you probably have a couple final words you'd like to say. Uh, Don did text me. He wants to give a shout out to this Lori. Uh, really appreciates all the effort she puts forward and able to, you know, help guys who are getting their trucks switched over as far as buying new ones and all that work that she does. So thank you, Don. We appreciate uh, recognizing people within the safety. Um, you know, can't say that enough that uh, all the work that gets done, same goes for Jason too. Um, you know, <laughs> we're just making sure everyone stays compliant and legal like I said earlier in the presentation, you never can tell where something's going to happen, and we always want to make sure we're on the, the right side of doing things so we never have to worry about anything that would turn out to be a negative impact for us. Uh, with that, I just want to thank everybody for calling. appreciate you taking some time out of your day to join us, uh, just tuning in, listening to what we have to say, and then whatever else uh, individuals calling in and some of the good information they share with us. Jason? Yeah, absolutely, Dale. Um, and just kind of on that, we appreciate all the drivers out there and everything you do. Um, without you guys, of course, there's no us here. And everybody, stay safe out there. And that's all. You guys have a great day. Thank you.